Hello everyone, today we will be discussing Sir Isaac Newton's Three Laws of Motion. Sir Isaac Newton's first law states that an object at rest stays at rest unless acted upon by another force, and an object in motion stays in motion with the same speed and direction unless acted upon by another unbalanced force. An unbalanced force are forces that make the object change direction, speed up, or slow down. This is also known as the law of inertia. Inertia is the resistance of any physical object to a change in its state of motion or rest, or the tendency of an object to resist any change in its motion. Now, for our first example, we see the cue ball in a state of rest. An object at rest stays at rest unless acted upon by another force. Now when we apply a force by the pool stick, the cue ball is now in motion. Theoretically, the ball will continuously roll because an object in motion stays in motion unless acted upon by another force. Now why did the cue ball stop? It's because the friction between the cue ball and the pool table. If friction was not a factor, the ball would continuously roll and not stop unless another force was there to act upon. Now, we'll get on to Newton's second law. Newton's second law states that an acceleration of an object is dependent upon two variables the net force acting upon the object, and the mass of the object. The equation is as follows, force equals mass times acceleration. Now, for our next example, we have two balls of equal masses. We struck the cue ball with a light force to make it accelerate, but then we ended up striking the red ball with a greater force, which made it travel at a higher acceleration. Finally, we are left with Newton's third law, and this law states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. This means that in every interaction between two objects, there is a pair of forces acting on both objects, and that the size of the forces on the first object equals the size of the force on the second object. When the red ball hits the yellow ball, the force of the red ball transfers through the two center balls to the cue ball. The action of the red ball causes an equal and opposite reaction in each of the balls, and thus making the cue ball move in an opposite direction. Now let's go ahead and see another example of Newton's third law. When we apply a force to the cue ball, it travels in one direction until it strikes the other balls. When it strikes the other balls, it is applying an equal force to these balls. The reaction of this, the balls, will then travel in one direction depending on the angle that the cue ball hit. Now, let's go ahead and review all of Sir Isaac Newton's laws of motion by playing a little bit of pool. During a game of pool, we can see all of Newton's laws of motion in effect. Newton's first law, an object at rest stays at rest unless acted upon by another force and an object in motion stays in motion unless acted upon by another force. Newton's second law, acceleration of an object is dependent upon two variables, the net force acting upon the object and the mass of the object. And Newton's third law, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. During a game of pool, we can clearly see all three of Newton's laws of motion in effect. All balls that are at rest will remain at rest unless acted upon by another force. All the balls that are in motion would remain in motion, but we do have the force of friction acting upon these balls. Now when we strike the cue ball with a force, the net force is equal to the mass times acceleration. Therefore, when we strike the cue ball with a higher force, the acceleration will be greater. And we see whenever one of the balls strike another ball, there is an equal and opposite reaction. It's rather amazing to see how much Newton's laws of motion apply to our everyday life. Not just in pool, but next time you kick a soccer ball or drive a car, you can clearly see all three of Sir Isaac Newton's laws of motion. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.